22, please. We've talked about the deeds of the flesh, but the fruit of the Spirit is. Now, the fruit, remember, it takes a while. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Listen to this. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now, we'll come back to this, and I'll repeat it, but I'm going to say something right now. Against such things there is no law. Everybody's just trying to do a translation, and but put it in, in Texan. That's not against the law. I mean, these things, you know, we that that's why I when people go, oh, the Ten Commandments, and I go, what problem do you have? With, and you kind of want to ask them in front of their marriage partner, what problem do you have with you should not commit adultery? Will you please tell me what the problem is here? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Well, ah, uh, ah, uh, yeah. Oh, it's okay if you do it. You just don't want it done against you. I'm being really bad now. We better move along. Verse 24. <clears throat> now, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified... Woo! Here we go again. We've talked about this. Those belong to Christ Jesus have crucified what? The flesh. What died? The flesh. My sarks died. I mean, this again, this is one of those things that we need to go, wow. Uh, my sarks died. Does that mean that my sarx has been raised up in the resurrection? I don't know. I've not figured that one out yet. I can tell you this, the old one's dead. And the new one, I now live by the strength and the life of Christ in me, which we'll talk about later. We've already talked about some. I've crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Um, when we look at the list that we looked at and Paul saying none of these things are against the law, the good news is that when one's sarks is under the authority of the sarks of Jesus Christ, doing the things against the law doesn't cross your mind. It's not part of you. Why? Because the sarks that I'm living by, the life that I live by now, having stepped into the presence of God through the very sarks, which is the veil, has changed me completely. Now, I want you to hear, you don't, the, the, the people will go, and you see, you don't walk by the letter anymore. So we throw out the law. That's not what it's saying. What it is saying is, is that when you were in the flesh, you used to go, okay, I'm going to do this, this, and this. And you, because you tried to do it in your flesh, in which Paul lets us know, nothing good dwells there. There's nothing good in it. Oh, I'm going to go out and do what? Good? Really? You're not. And so our desire, our thought was, okay, I'm going to go out and do these, these things and the living by the letter of the law was, with, was saying with your flesh, with your sarks, I will go out and I will do all these things. The spirit, living by the spirit, is different. And it, but it, the difference is not throwing out the law. That's not what the difference is. Unfortunately, that is what is now taught has been taught for a long time, just different ways, in the church. And this is a lie. This is a total lie. Um, the Your mind, remember we talked about walking by the Spirit, and that is subjecting your mind to the law of God. And you've crucified, though, the flesh with its passions and desires. What remains in the Sarks is that you love joy, peace, patience, all those good things. And the control of when you're walking by the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is the control of the self. In the, the Greek, 
is uh, in kratos, which uh, in is something that's within, and the the uh, kratos kratos rather I'm sorry is mastery over. So it's mastery over the inside, the thing that's always pushing on me. It's dominion over the inside. Um, now, I want to talk just real quickly here about what does he mean when he says we're led by the Spirit? Well, I, I want us to go back up and, um, and look. See if I can get this done in this computer without much trouble. Um, walking by the Spirit... Uh, one of the first things is that I want you to look at verse 16, where we've been looking. Just by definition, I want, I want, let's just stop everything and people that go, yes, oh, yes, we're walking by the Spirit, and they'll go, oh, oh you can see hear the charismatics now. Oh, yes, that's good. Walking by the Spirit. But I've never heard anybody define it this way except poor Paul. And look in verse 16, and he defines what walking by the Spirit is and what it looks like. Look at that. It's, you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. I mean, when, when somebody says, are you walking by the Spirit? And you, you go, well, are you, how are you defining that? And you won't hear anybody actually telling you this. You should. But, but there's one of the first definitions of it. He, the, next, the next thing that he says that is walking by the Spirit, we find in verse 17, which we've already talked about. You may not do the things you please. The next thing we see in defining being led by the Spirit, verse 18 is very, very clear. You're not under the law. Oh, hey, great, we're not under the law. But the thing that I think we have to remember is the purpose of Galatians was to discuss one word, justification. Turn to Galatians chapter 2. Please, everybody, turn to Galatians ch chapter 2. You've got to see this because people will, will pull this stuff out of Galatians and they'll go, look, look, and you have got to be able to say that's not what the subject is. The subject is not throwing out the law. The subject is the wrongful use of the law. Galatians chapter 2, verse 15. Okay, Ms. Davis, read um, 15 through 21. We are, we are Jews by nature and not sinners from among the Gentiles. Nevertheless, knowing that a man is not justified. Oh! oh. I'm sorry. Justified. By justified, there it was. Justif a man is not just. Go ahead. Justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Christ Jesus. You see, the issue is not the law. The issue is not the law, but the, but the focus is justified. Go ahead. Even we have believed in Christ Jesus that we may be justified do you by want to, faith. Do you, when you come to the word justified, do you want to yell it out real loud so I don't have to? Justified by faith in that Christ. That wasn't yelling it out real loud. Oh, okay. All yeah. right, justified. Here we go. By faith in Christ and not by the works of the law, since the works of the law shall no, since by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Did you hear that? Let's give it up for Mrs. Davis. That was good. Yeah, see, so, so far we've had three justifieds. Get that up on the game board here. Verse 17, Miss Davis, please. But if while seeking to be justified, oh, Christ, ah, ah. we ourselves have been found sinners. Is Christ then a minister of sin? May it never be. What is sin? What? Missing the mark, which is God. Missing the mark. Depends Missing the mark, God. which is God. A transgression of the law. Go ahead. For if I rebuild what I have once destroyed, I prove myself to be a transgressor. For through the law, I died to the law that I might live to God. What's, he what's, the, what's the subject matter, folks? Justified. Justified. Through the law, I died to the law. Okay, I'm, I'm going to work out. I'm, hang on. We got this now. I, I, I know I can do it this time. I'm, I'm going to be just. I, I know there was that little issue yesterday, but and, and today too. Yeah, okay. But 
but we're I'm going we're going to get this done now. And so we try to be justified by the law. And if I keep on doing that, if I'm actually paying attention, what do I find? I can't do it. So through the law, what do you do? I die the law. What is it? What's another way of saying? Well, I kept trying to do those things, and I finally what? Gave up. Gave up. I finally gave up, which is not a very a very bad thing. It's called surrender. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You're going to yell that round mm -hmm. loud, don't you? Okay. Good. Go ahead. For through the law. I died to the law that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God, who loved me and delivered himself up for me. I do not nullify the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died needlessly. Right. Now, remember, in, in Romans, Paul says, well, do we get rid of the law because of faith? No, in fact, I, I actually make it even stronger. Um, here he is saying, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live. Now, remember, one of the things about Christ that everybody loves to point out is that he had no what? Sin. He was sinless. Defined by what? The law. Hmm. Okay. But now this Christ that lived the law comes to live in you so that you might walk by the Spirit. What's the purpose? So that you can do what you want? Or do you think maybe it's the power to live a godly life, which would be defined Anyway, you know what I'm saying. I mean, we've got this Jesus that when he was living outside me, he did not sin. In other words, he did not violate the law, right? But now that he's living inside me and I'm a Christian here in the 21st century, I can do what I want. Something's wrong with that theological statement because the, the Christ that lived outside did not sin. Now, does he come inside and sin? Oh, no, but the law's been thrown out. That's not what it's saying. It's saying you're not under the law for justification, period. That's it. That's all it's talking about. And may I say something? He did not live. He did not fulfill the law by his own efforts. That's right. If he did that, then he's telling us to do not do mm -hmm. what he did. And it, the grace of God is empowerment. Do I nullify God's empowerment in me? No, I let God work that in me. It's by the Spirit that the law is fulfilled in us. And Jesus walked dependent upon the Spirit of God. That was, you know, he didn't, I'm trusting in my own righteousness. It says we're not supposed to. That's his life be informed. He's already walked that way, but his father was his justification. His faith in his father. Don't you believe that my father's working, you know, in me? The words I'm saying, I'm not speaking from my own initiative, but the father abiding in me is doing his work. He was dependent upon the father always. Missing the mark. Sin is missing that dependence upon God. That's right. Sin is, and you know, it's not just, oh, well, I have a thought about God. It's no, the, at one moment, the dependence upon God instead of dependence upon myself. Sin is me trying to do the works of the law, me trying to be pleasing to God in my efforts. And no, I'm pleasing to God through looking to him, looking to Christ as my everything, being my sufficiency. That is pleasing to God, not my efforts. That's right. Only looking Amen. and believing in him. My efforts, though, get, you get to be proud, pride, prideful that way, which is one of the issues. If, unless you're, but most people that are that way, I have to say, are not really paying attention to their own self. Um, okay, let's carry on. Galatians chapter 3. Miss Davis, you're on again. Verse 11, please. Now that no one is justified by the laws. <laughs> is evident. I don't see any giggles in there, but if you think, okay. Well, I said I realized Giggle. I needed to put more enthusiasm there. Okay. 
now that no one is justified by the law before God is evident, for the righteous man shall live by faith. Okay. Uh, Paul is quoting from Hebrew Scriptures, um, and it's by faith. It's always been by faith. It's always been by faith. It's never been by the works of the law. It's never been, okay, I'm going to go and do these things. We made it that way, but the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible doesn't say it. Go to verse 23, Miss Davis. And read 23 through 27. But before faith came, we were kept in custody under the law, being shut up by faith, which was later to be revealed. Shut up to the faith, which was later to be revealed. Therefore, the law has become our tutor to lead us to Christ, that we may be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. For we are all sons of God, of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. Now, Lord, is that? Wow, that's good. No, that's mm -hmm. right. Um, I, I wanted to, we, we, verse 24 is where the word justified is, but the rest of it was just too, too good. You're all sons of God through faith in Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. Uh, you are in him. For all of you are baptized into Christ. You've clothed yourself with Christ. More of the justification. Verse, or rather chapter 5, verse 2 through 6, please. Behold I, behold, I, Paul, say to you that if you receive circumcision, Christ will be of no benefit to you. And I testify again to every man who receives circumcision that he is under obligation to keep the whole law, you have been severed from Christ. You are you who are seeking to be justified by law. You have fallen from grace. For we, through the Spirit, by faith, are waiting, are waiting for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything but faith working through love. Okay. Verse 4. Seeking to be justified by law, you've fallen from grace. I find this fascinating. Remember, I mean, this is a side note very quickly, but the once saved, always saved thing. And, uh, you know, the security of the believer. And yet this is saying something pretty loud. Paul is saying, those of you that are trying to be justified by the law, that you follow from grace. In other words, there's, there's somehow a way to get to fall from the grace. Now, I want to point one other thing out to in verse 5. For we, through the Spirit, by faith, are waiting for the hope of righteousness. Now, I want, I want you to think about that for a second. When you're reading that, it's real easy, because you've been trained, that you are waiting for one of these days out here, the pie in the sky thing, you're waiting for the hope of righteousness. I mean, doesn't it sound like that? You know, now, the reason it sounds like that is because you have been trained to think of it that way. But if we really stop to think and go back to the beginning of the discussion we're having here, that uh, the fruit, fruit, fruit takes time, which means you plant the seed and you do what? You wait. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? All he's saying here is that this is, in some ways, if you want to call it, this is actually a definition of faith. Faith is what? Well, I've planted seeds. When I plant those seeds, the word, I'm waiting. I'm not, it's not about way off in the future. It's about God is is producing in me good fruit. And what I'm waiting for is that hope of right. Do you understand? I mean, it's a completely different thing. It's now. It's not. Now faith is. Anyway, <clears throat> we've been told, again, that the Old Testament law does not apply to the Christian. And nothing could be further from the truth, and nothing could be as big a lie as that. The issue in the book of Galatians was not the law, there's people preaching that we should be made just by the works of the law rather than faith in Christ. Um.